What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Here we are getting ready to tackle our last topic for the fourth market period, wrapping up our senior year. I know it's bittersweet. I know this is not exactly how you saw it playing out, but we're going to do our best. We're going to think positive, and we're going to get through this. And this last section here, we're still in our fourth marking period. Different types of energy. Now, I know this from experience because you guys, some of you at least, had me as a ninth grade teacher. And uh, that was the first year I was teaching at Hodgson. And uh, I was very surprised at um, some of our backgrounds when we came on to this topic. But one of the things that we did cover was different types of energy. Okay. If you go into your notes and examples here, you'll see a slide deck shared. We have our two main types, and this is something not only that we went over in my class in ninth grade, but in middle school as well. I know some of you had different physical science teachers, and we come from a bunch of different places in middle school. So um, just to quickly talk over the different types of energy, we really break it up into two categories. We have kinetic and we have potential. Kinetic is going to be any sort of energy that is associated with motion and then potential energy is associated with position and that's energy that's stored because of that position okay um we'll have two main equations we have our main oops, excuse me we have our main kinetic energy equation which is one half mv squared m being the mass v being the velocity and then GPE, gravitational potential energy, is the mass times our acceleration of gravity times the height of that object. Okay, and the unit for all energy, okay, it could be heat, it could be kinetic, it could be potential. And again, we'll find out that there's different variations of each of those. Um, the unit on energy is going to be joules, and that's going to be a capital J. I'll follow up with another screencast of these two examples right here. Um, one last thing I want to talk about before moving on is the conservation of energy. Okay, and that is much like the conservation of momentum that we were just talking about. Conservation of mass when balancing equations in chemistry. The conservation of energy is saying that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It only can change form. All right, so we get into the conversation of transferring versus transforming. All right, I like to think about money when we're, we're having this conversation. What's the difference between transfer and transform? If I transfer, let's say I transfer some money from my account to, say, like my mom's account, right? I When I transfer something, it is the same thing, just in a different place. So if I transfer money from my account to my mom's account, it's still money. It's just now in a different place, right? So I can do the same thing with energy. I can push, let's say, a, a shopping cart. I am transferring kinetic energy from myself to that shopping cart. Now, if I transform something, now I think about the movie Transformers. The actual type of energy is changing in itself. So I might be, you know, I might hold a golf ball up and drop it. It's going to start with potential energy. And it's going to transform into kinetic energy. Okay. So those are the main talking points there. You, there, there there's a, a little bit more there that you can take a look at. And I'll, I'll leave you to do that on your own time. So the next bit that you should be looking at is getting into the energy skate park here. All right, up top here, we have a couple useful graphs that I suggest that you add on here. We can add our skater here, and you can pause them somewhere along the track. Or let them keep going. Right, and you can see that these graphs will represent the different types of energy that are present throughout this process. Okay. I have a couple different types of tracks I can make here. If you go to this playground tab, you can make your own track. You know, and I'll let you guys play around with it. There's one with friction. Almost didn't make it there. You'll notice that on this friction tab here, thermal energy starts becoming 
present in our process. Okay, a couple other things that you can look at here. You can change the mass. Note the ch you know not only the pieces of the pie, but how big the pie is. You know, as I slide this here, you can see that that pie chart is getting larger or smaller, and I can adjust my friction to all the way down to zero or to a whole bunch. One big question I get as I uh, as you guys start to work on this assignment is how do I manipulate these uh, pie charts? And I, I know it's a little wonky. It's a little weird. Uh, this is an example from a student I had last year. If you double click it, it'll open these up and it'll allow you to edit them. You know, and I can make another one here and I could shade this in however you like. Okay, she chose to actually make the sh shapes herself and then just put them on top of the circles. There's a couple different ways that you can do that. Once you are finished with that, you should be able to click save and close. And again, I sort of messed hers up here. I'm going to go back and delete that. But it'll automatically update your drawing on this Google Doc here. So, you know, just double click that to get into edit it. Make sure you click save and close. When you're all finished and it should come back and update your your pie charts here on the assignment page for the the skate park here so um on top of that like i said i'm gonna screencast the examples f uh, from the notes i'll put those in here as well but other than that we should be good to finish out sort of our our last cycle here as always, if you have any questions, shoot them to me on Schoology. Um, you know, and if nothing else, hopefully uh, I'll hear from you guys soon. All right, guys, be healthy and be well, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.